So when we look at this function here, let's say you're not convinced. Let's say you're not convinced that this is the simplest sort of representation that you can give to it. Now let me tell you, you'd be right, because you can actually simplify this even further. In fact, depending on the type of function that you are dealing with, you can actually simplify this statement into even a simpler sort of statement. You see, in practice, and very often in homework problems in mathematics, we deal with even functions and odd functions. And let me just throw up on the board what an even and odd function are, in case you just forgot, for instance. What they are is, let's say you have some sort of a function, f of t, which the even representation of it, the even representation of it, would be f of t, on some interval from 0 to t to a, where alpha is some sort of a stopping point, the interval in which we are analyzing our system from 0 to a. And f of negative t is the exact same thing as f of t. So like, so like the cosine, for instance. The cosine is symmetric about the y-axis. So no matter if you put you know, cosine of negative x or cosine of x, you're going to get the exact same range. You're going to get the exact same y-value. And this holds on the other side of the y-axis, namely from negative a to t to 0. And what this is, this, this is the even, even representation of our function f of t. And this is the standard notation for the uh, even representation of a function. Likewise, we have an odd representation of a function. And the odd representation of a function is written very similarly to this. We write f bar odd representation of t is equal to, once again, f of t on our interval that we are working with, 0 to a. But this time, it equals negative f of negative t on the other negative interval negative f of negative t. Easiest case in point, the sine function. The sine function, when you look at it with respect to symmetry of the y-axis, you see that it dips down below the x-axis. So sine of negative x is equal to negative sine of x. So how is this related to our ideas of a Fourier series representation? Well, if we're dealing with even or odd functions, we can actually represent our trigonometric Fourier series as a much simpler version. Namely, we can write the even Fourier series representation. What would that look like? It would look like this. Even Fourier series representation of a function would be written as a naught plus the summation from k equals 1 to infinity a sub k cosine 2 pi omega sub k t. If we had an odd function that we were working with, we can write the odd Fourier series representation of a function. Now how would that look like? It would look like this the odd Fourier series representation of a function is simply equal to sigma k equals 1 to infinity b sub k sine 2 pi omega sub k t. The odd Fourier series representation. But you see, all of these representations represent our function f of t. In fact, they are all equivalent to each other. Sometimes when we deal with hard problems, problems in nature, we wish to express a periodic extension of a function. Because if we deal with a periodic extension of a function, we can write a Fourier series for that periodic extension. And the mathematics describing that extension are equally applicable to the whole system in general. So the moral of the story is, 
your even series representation of a function equals your odd Fourier series representation of a function, which equals your trigonometric Fourier series representation of a function, depending on the type of problem that you are trying to solve and depending on the periodic extension that you choose. So for instance, if you want to express that mathematically without having to listen to a verbal explanation, you would write that our f of t, our trigonometric Fourier series representation of it, is equal to our even representation of our function, which is equal to our odd representation of our function. And all of these different representations, these Fourier series representations, are all equivalent to each other. In fact, when we deal with Fourier series, we sometimes have to be very careful what type of representation we choose to make of the data that we are trying to model. Because the representation that we choose to make will ultimately show us something within our system that we hope to capture. And depending on what we hope to capture, we have to intuitively feel what kind of a representation would best suit our data. Now, you may be looking at this and you may be wondering, well, if all of these different Fourier series representations are all equivalent to each other, well, is there something that engineers and scientists prefer to work with? Is there something that they prefer over the representations that you see here up on the board? And the answer is yes. And you might have guessed why. Because working with sines and cosines, as you may know from experience, can become very tedious very fast. For a computer, no problem. But for a back of the envelope calculation for a physicist or a mathematician, it's not a very good idea to work with sines and cosines. So very often, what engineers and scientists do is they work with Fourier series, but they don't work with the trigonometric Fourier series. They work with the complex Fourier series. And we all know from Euler's very famous formula, which says that e to the i theta is equal to cosine of theta plus i sine of theta, that you can easily easily go back and forth between sines and cosines and the complex exponential. In fact, you can derive the complex Fourier series representation of a function from the trigonometric Fourier series representation of a function. And the reason why engineers and scientists prefer to work with the complex Fourier series representation is because sometimes in nature it is a lot easier to work with that sort of a representation. It's not as tedious, although they are all equivalent to each other. So, what does the complex Fourier series representation of a function look like? Looks like this. We write that once again, a function, f of t, is equal to sigma k equals negative infinity to infinity of c sub k e to the i 2 pi omega sub k t, where c sub k is once again just another constant. And that constant is just as simple as the constants we were dealing with before. It is written as 1 over the p, the period, the integral from 0 to p of f of t e to the negative i 2 pi omega sub k t dt. So now we're at the point where you may be wondering, well, if you can express your function as a complex Fourier series, and engineers and scientists prefer to do that because it is much simpler to work with, is there a generalized Fourier series representation of a function? Is there some sort of a very, very, very general abstract sort of representation of a function? 
And the answer to that question is yes. And when we wish to write the generalized Fourier series of a function and express it with generalized Fourier coefficients, we would write the following. We would write 